Hi there, welcome back. As you can probably see, there's been quite a bit of progress since the last video. This is, I believe, uh, what is it, fourth video in the um, Telefunken Gewot 55 series. And the first obvious change is that the entire hardware section has been cleaned up and uh, put back. The faceplate, the buttons, the knobs, everything's been uh, properly cleaned. The top, as usual, shiny and glossy. Reminds me a bit of uh, one of those sort of metal cars they used to try to make. Anyway, I'm sidetracking. Let's have a closer look. Look at that. Everything is nice and shiny. The most obvious uh, change is really the brass on the knobs. This was done with the Dremel. Uh, all the brass on there was completely, completely darkened up and stained and it comes out like new. The faceplate has absolutely no damage on it, so all I needed to do was clean it and make sure that I don't break it. As for all the knobs, everything has come out beautifully. Again, quite a lot of uh, soapy water and leave it in there for a while and then a toothbrush and cotton buds, anything you need <laughs> to get this thing cleaned up. These um, knobs have got these little sort of grooves on there and that you need to brush out with a toothbrush. I know that if I got a ultrasonic cleaner, that would make that a lot easier. But again, more equipment for the workshop that I'm going to use once in a while just doesn't seem like it's worth it. Also, the idea is to make this almost as uh, handmade as possible. But again, everything comes out beautifully. These were actually removed. They come out. You've got to be careful because they can crack. This becomes really brittle with age, but I managed to remove them. And then when I put it back, you just give it a little dollop of, uh, of glue and then push it in and it stays there good as new. Here you can really see what the knobs have come out like. It's perfect. And again, a lot of cleaning on the ridges, those little sort of ridges on there. You can actually hear them. Uh, those uh, do collect dirt and you have to just keep at it. Usually you don't even see the dirt when it's wet, so you, you brush it out, let it dry, check again. If necessary, you take a toothpick and you sort of scrape the, the grooves out and brush it again. And just keep at it. It takes a while. It it's actually takes a hell of a long time, but it really comes out beautifully. And then the little things like this. It's a cloth surgical tape, like a plaster, that you use uh, for cuts and bruises and stuff like that. And you can still get it. It's, it's, it's a cloth based, it's cloth covered. And it's exactly what they had there. The stuff they had was already really tarnished and dirty. So I removed that and replaced them all with, uh, with new stuff. One of the few things you can still get, which is great. And besides that, at the top, you won't see any difference at all. A little bit more cleaning here and there, as I find spots that uh, could do with a bit of revisiting. But most of what was done was on the underside and most of what was done is not really apparent because most of it was just checking connections and checking components. Um, let me show you the schematic and how much has been done on there. This gives you an idea of how much work has actually been done. Everything that's in green has been checked. And this part here was obviously done before we did the uh, power section and the preamp section. Now this tube here has two functions. One is as a preamp, an audio preamp, before it uh, feeds the power tube. But it also has the, um, the diodes in here, which is for the detection, both for AM and for FM. Now, everything I've done here relates to the AM. So everything you see painted in green has been checked with a view of getting the AM Perfect. However, as you can see, there isn't much here that isn't painted. In other words, the FM section is not, uh, does not actually have a lot of dedicated components. Most of it has to do with um, the frequencies at which some of these coils resonate and also these two resistors up here and, and capacitor. But most of it is already been checked. So um, yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. Now, what did I find wrong here? Well, let me get closer and show you. The only two components that I needed to actually change during this phase were two capacitors, 
this 10 nanofarad here and this 15 nanofarad here. This one is a sort of a, a smoothing uh, capacitor for the magic eye. What it does is it, uh, it receives a signal strength indicator from here, a voltage, it's a negative voltage, comes through this 1.6 meg resistor to here, and then it activates the opening and closing of the, uh, of the eye. However, if you didn't have a little bit of smoothing, that opening and closing would be just too haphazard, too sporadic. So you have this little capacitor here. Well, it's not so little, but it does a little bit of smoothing. So it gives it a bit of a time constant, basically it gives it a bit of hysteresis, which means that the uh, uh, alterations on the magic eye are not, you know, all over the place. They sort of uh, show you an average result. The other one is this guy over here, which is the uh, AVC capacitor. And again, this does basically the same thing. It takes the AVC voltage. As you can see, it basically comes from the same spot here. In other words, this 5 is the, uh, the takeaway of the switch, the toggle position of the switch, the center position. And um, what you have here is when you connect it to AC, or B is what? B is the FM uh, section. So it'll either take the signal from there or it'll take it from there. I think that's how it works. But this thing does basically the same thing. The signal that's on this point and this point, when it's switched that way, both go, it goes through 1.6 meg resistor, and you've got that sort of smoothing cap down there. And it goes from here through a 1.6 meg resistor, and it goes through that 47, well, 50 nanofarad. I'll put a 47 in, and it does a bit of smoothing there as well. So the function is basically the same. Now, if we look at the overall, what do we have left? Well, not much really. Let me show you um, some of these IF transformers. There's the first IF transformer. As you can see, the signal comes from this point here, this anode of the detect of the um, mixer oscillator section. And it comes along here through there and it goes through both of these. Now these are basically, this is connected to B+, whether direct or otherwise, it's got a 2K resistor on here. And so this is effectively the load of that anode. And whatever is happening there is produced across this load. Now, what happens is you can see they're both in series, but what you've got here is you can see that is a 10, a 10 picofarad capacitor there, and that one is a 160 picofarad capacitor. It doesn't tell you what the inductance of these two are, but what this is, is it's two tank circuits, and they're supposed to resonate at different frequencies. Now, um, this one here resonates at 10.7 megahertz, or it's supposed to resonate at 10.7 megahertz, and that means that uh, it's for the FM. And this one is supposed to resonate at 460 kilohertz, which is the IF for the AM. So because the frequencies are so far apart, um, 460 kilohertz going through here will not have any effect on this, uh, on this tank circuit and 10.7 megahertz going through here will not have any effect on this tank, tank circuit, okay? Which means that depending on whether you've got FM or AM, either this one is the one that does the uh, inductive coupling for FM, or this one does the inductive coupling if it's AM. So you get the result of the inductive coupling at the IF frequency going through here. And as you can see, this one, if you follow from there, 0.7, that's for FM, and you follow down through this, that would be a load, that would be a signal being induced on there, and it goes to here, and then you've got a resistor and a capacitor of ground. This is effectively a tank circuit, but it's a tank circuit to release any frequencies that are not within the span that you want. And so basically your signal, your 10.7 megahertz, uh, frequency modulated signal would go into that IF amplifier to be amplified and passed on to there. If you select AM, then the same thing would happen here on this one. And this one is also connected to, what is that? That's the, um, that thing there is the, it's got an AGC, automatic gain control, which would go up here and it would feed that uh, connector 8, in other words, the grid, so that would allow for uh, automatic gain control on AM, and your signal would also go in there and get amplified. So, as you can see, this thing has a, got a dual function, and if you follow through to this end, it's got the same situation. The uh, signal is amplified, comes out here, goes through that 
coil and goes through that tank circuit. Well, this is also a tank circuit, but that one's for AM. And your AM gets fed into that detected diode there. And your FM gets fed into two diodes. Is it one? No, one diode. Beg your pardon. One diode here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the uh, cathodes goes across the cathode and across the one diode. And then what you've got is, where's the other one? This diode here is, yeah, that one's the one that goes to the ratio detector and you've got the two resistors here and you've got the, the capacitor here. This is where you're gonna measure the relative uh, FM st signal strength, but we'll get to that later. So effectively, all this checking that you do, when you check continuity between there and there, you're checking the continuity of this coil and that coil. In other words, the AM and the FM component of this um, closed-in IF transformer. So yeah, that basically takes us to the point where we are now ready to feed. Well, first of all, we'll check that AM is coming through okay, and then we're ready to do uh, an IF alignment for the AM. And the way that works is you feed a signal into the grid of the ECH81, which is the uh, mixer oscillator. So you feed a 460 kilohertz signal with an audio tone modulated on it, a tone that you can hear, and you feed that in here or directly in there. That goes through, gets amplified and mixed with the, um, the signal that comes from below, from, well, where is it? from here, and this here is your oscillator section, yeah? So that signal comes in here and gets fed in there. Those two mix, and what you get is the 460 coming through because you're actually feeding the signal that would result as a uh, subtraction between the, uh, the difference between the tuned frequency up front and the oscillator frequency. What you're doing is you're just feeding in that IF frequency. That gets amplified and comes out here and goes through there. You then, well, go straight through that one because that's EFM. You then tune these two, 20 and 21, 20 and 21. We'll see where that is in a minute. You tune those two to get the maximum signal coming through to this IF amplifier. So you're basically filtering anything outside of the range of that uh, IF frequency and you make it more selective effectively. That signal gets amplified and it comes through here and it goes straight through that one, which is the FM. And it comes to here and again, you tune those two together, 27 and 28, again to the IF frequency. So the signal is again filtered through uh, or anything outside of that uh, IF frequency is filtered out. And that comes through here and it goes to there. And at this point, it's a 460 kilohertz signal. Well, at this point, 460 kilohertz signal uh, with the audio tone modulated on it. When it goes through there and it meets a diode, that gets rectified and you basically have the detection phase that happens. Now, in the one case, your um, audio comes out here. This is the AM, audio comes out here. This is not just AF, audio frequencies comes to here. You've got AM and FM audio, and that's your switch, and that switch then goes through to there. And from there then goes on to the volume control. Okay, well actually that's not the volume, is it? Yeah, it is. Volume control. So we're ready to feed the 460 kilohertz signal with the uh, audio tone modulated on it into here. And we will be measuring at the speaker itself. Now what I'm going to do is I want to connect, uh, I'll connect this to my dummy load switcher, which will allow me to hear it first. And then I can put a dummy load on there so that we don't have to hear the noise. And we can also see the result of this across here, from here to there. We, we can measure on the AC voltmeter. Now remember, what we're hearing here is a 600 hertz tone, an audio tone, which is what I'm modulating that signal with. So we uh, be, will be able to see it on the uh, millivolt or the voltmeter. And we will peak these, where is it, 20, 21, 27, and 28, peak them so that we get the highest amplitude tone coming out of that end. So let me set that up and we'll be ready to go. It would be good to know that this thing's working, obviously. I've got the uh, radio on medium wave. I've got the mini-whip antenna. Let's hear it. 
recurrir a la medida en la Audiencia Nacional. Pues That's the Canary Islands. Las medidas, al menos en su arranque. La patrulla de la policía. Hasta bien entrado en el impuesto de la situación de vacío. Now, most of these are Canary Islands. One exception is the Madeiran uh, AM station. There's only one. Let's try a long wave, see if we get anything. That's our uh, Porto Santo beacon. And it's working. Now, it's a bit bassy because um, the electrostatic tweeter is not connected, so we're only getting the lower frequencies, and it's coming through on a pretty big speaker here in the workshop. So the result is, yeah, it is working. I don't know how much I can improve on it. Um, this is uh, midday, so mm, you don't normally get much on AM. I'm actually getting a lot more than I expected, and that's thanks to the mini whip again. Uh, but I can certainly do a comparative test, feed the signal in, and, and improve it. So we'll take it from there. I'll set it up, and I'll show you the result. Now, just to confirm, if the ones we want to adjust are this one here, this one here, and of course the corresponding ones on the underside, which will be that one in there, and that one in there. What I have here is the signal generator producing a 460 kilohertz tone, or carrier. It is modulation, 30% modulation, it's AM modulation, and the frequency that I'm modulating is 600 hertz. So effectively, the signal generator is producing a carrier with a 600 hertz tone uh, AM modulated on it. The amplitude is as low as it'll go. It comes out of here and it goes into my attenuator. And at the moment, my attenuator is at, what is it? 12 dB. Or is it 18 dB? No, this is 12 dB. I've got to get the labels done. Uh, 3, 6, 12, and 18, I think it is. The dummy antenna is switched off. So that's, if I put that up, there's less attenuation. It comes out of here, and it goes to the grid 2 of the ECC, uh, ECH81, which is the mix oscillator. And now I'm going to show you the uh, meter and show you what happens. Now, I've switched it on, and I'm going to give it some volume and we can hear it. So because we can hear it, I can switch this to dummy load that gets rid of the noise. And it's pretty high, so I can actually give it a bit more attenuation. That is, that is now, uh, yeah, I guess, or maybe there. All right, I'm gonna start adjusting and see what we get. Here's the first one. Oui. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to attenuate some more. Right, that's now where I want it. I'm going to adjust it. This is the first one at the top. Oh, that seems to be a peak over there. See that? I'm going through it. That's a peak over there. Okay, that's good. We've got a bit of uh, improvement on that one. Let me go to the underside. Got to be careful, there's high voltages down here. This uh, screwdriver thingy is ceramic. Oh, nice, okay. I'm going to attenuate some more. And now I can adjust it again. Okay, that's my peak. That's my peak. Okay, let me go to the other one on the underside. I think that's peaked. It's not moving much. I think that one is fine. Let's try the top again. The other one on the top. It's 
This one's jumpy, but that's about it. This one's really jumpy. Okay. And that's it, it's peaked. It is peaked at 460 kilohertz. Now, will we notice a difference? Let me turn it around and try. The mini whip antenna is in place already and I've got it on medium wave. Let's see what we get. Whoa. Sounds good. Not much trouble because of the Electro electrostatic tweeter not being connected. Perfect. Try the long wave. There's our trusty beacon. Somewhere in France, I think. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, what about FM? I could have told you, but I want to show you. Still not a peep. Not a peep. And that means we still got some more to go. So in summary, folks, what have we got? We've got the AM aligned. I'll probably, probably do a, um, an RF alignment right at the end. I'm really anxious to, because obviously with the AM, I've only adjusted aligned the IF frequency. There's still a question of where it is on the, on the dial and whether the antenna circuit is optimized and so on. And I probably will do that. It's very simple on this radio, but I'm really anxious to get going and find out why we're getting absolutely nothing from FM. That is obviously one of the most uh, interesting parts for me. I want FM on this radio, as I do on all of them. It becomes very, very useful when you can pick up FM. So I'm going to cut off this video for now and uh, focus on that guy. That guy. The FM front end, I think. Um, and I will report back on how I get on. I really pray that it's nothing serious inside there. Again, uh, one of those things that I'd rather not open up if I can get away with it. But whatever it is, we'll find it, I'm sure. So, for now, I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for accompanying me on this project. And um, if you enjoyed the video, please uh, click like, uh, share it, subscribe all that jazz. Just a note on subscriptions. I noticed from my statistics that, or the analytics, that about 60% of my views are not from subscribers. So, hey, subscribe if you can. And uh, if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe. Yep, stay safe.